For the first time, CNN has interviewed a former member of Chinese security forces who tells CNN he was routinely ordered to arrest and torture Uyghur detainees in truly horrific and barbaric ways. China denies accusations from the United States that it has detained up to two million Uyghurs, many of them Muslim, in a system of modern-day internment camps in the Xinjiang region in northwestern China. CNN's Ivan Watson brings us uh, these disturbing new revelations, and we want to warn our viewers it contains graphic descriptions of violence and sexual assault. They touched the electric stick here, and it's, it's just, just like burning. This is the story of a victim and a self-confessed torturer. Did the police officers use electric batons to shock prisoners? Yeah. Yes, everyone uses different methods. For years, stories of arbitrary arrests, unspeakable cruelty, and mass internment camps have been trickling out of China's Xinjiang region. Testimonies from people like Abdueli Ayub. When you were detained in 2013, what was your main job? A uh, kindergarten teacher. Abdueli says police took him from his Uyghur language kindergarten. Uh, put the black hood on my face and they put me in a, the, this is the interrogation room. And inside the iron cage, there is a tiger chair. Your like uh, wrist shackled there and your like uh, feet also shackled. He says police accused him of espionage, plotting against the Chinese government and the crime of separatism. And they demanded a confession. You just confess. You just admit what you have done. It's good for you. Now, for the very first time, CNN has spoken to a former Chinese police officer who claims his job was to arrest and extract confessions from ethnic Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Some cops would play the good cops, and some would play the bad cops. After we beat them, we'd offer them a cigarette. Did you have to be the bad cop sometimes? Of course. The man, who asks to be called Jiang, says he worked more than 10 years as a cop before fleeing China after growing disillusioned with the ruling Communist Party. I met him in a European country. He wore his police uniform to authenticate his story, but does not want to be identified to protect himself and relatives who are still in China. To prove that he was a Chinese police officer, Jiang is showing me many photos of different police badges, training certificates, even portraits of his graduating class at police academy, images that we cannot show on television because they would reveal his identity. Jiang says he was sent from his home province to work in Xinjiang at least three times, during which he was ordered to arrest hundreds of suspects, all of them ethnic Uyghurs. How were the interrogations being conducted? Beat them, kick them, beat them bruised and swollen, knock their heads on the radiator. Police would step on the suspect's face and tell him to confess. Jiang says some suspects were as young as 14, and all of the detainees were beaten. Were the suspects all men? Men and women. Did you witness women being beaten? Yes. CNN cannot independently confirm Jiang's allegations, nor those of Abdullahi, the kindergarten teacher, who says in addition to beatings, he was raped on his first night of detention by Chinese prisoners who followed the orders of prison guards. It's really bad. This was prisoners who sexually assaulted you? Yeah, the prisoners. More than one? More than one. It's, you know, like, uh, just, uh, first of all, they surrounded me, and the police there ordered me to, to like, uh, uh, take off my uh, underwear and let me... And bend like, over. Uh, bend, bend over. Don't do this, don't do this, I, I, I cried. Please don't do this. And then like uh, one of, I don't know, just hold my hand like this. Yes. Jiang, the police officer who fled China, describes in graphic detail methods of sexual torture that he says police officers used. If you want people to confess, you use the electric baton. We would tie two electrical wires on the tips and set the wires on their genitals while the person is tied up. The result is better. 
He also says police sometimes ordered prisoners to sexually assault detainees. We call it an in-prison investigation. The Chinese government insists it is battling violent extremism in Xinjiang. Beijing also denies any human rights abuses whatsoever are being committed there. I want to reiterate that the so-called genocide in Xinjiang is nothing but a rumor backed by ulterior motives and an outright lie. But Jiang, the whistleblower cop, says he got double his normal salary to join tens of thousands of other police sent to Xinjiang as part of the government crackdown. How many of the people that you arrested in Xinjiang do you think were actually violent extremists? None. None? Xinjiang is not a war zone, and those people are our fellow citizens, not foreign enemies. If you didn't carry out the arrest, what would happen to you? Then I would be arrested as well, because that means I too am a part of a terrorist organization. I become their enemy. Abdullahi says after 15 months in detention, he confessed to illegal fundraising and was released. He later fled China. Since then, he says several of his relatives have been detained, including his niece, Mehrai. Where was your niece held? The same detention facility I stayed. I don't know how she died. I don't even know. She is the, she is the first one I, I hope. She is the first baby I hope in my life. She's just like my daughter. In response to written questions from CNN, the Xinjiang government denies that Mihai died in detention, saying the 30-year-old woman instead died of organ failure due to severe anemia after being treated in a hospital after suffering from an unknown illness. The Chinese government did not respond to written questions concerning allegations made by the former police officer. Abdulwelli now lives in Norway with his family and publishes children's books written in Uyghur. He insists he can forgive the men who jailed and tortured him. I don't hate them because uh, all of them victim of that system. If you met one of these prisoners, what would you say to them? I'm scared. I would leave immediately. Why? How do I face these people? You'd feel guilty, even if you're just a soldier. You're still responsible for what happened. Yes, you need to execute orders, but so many people did this thing together. We are responsible for this.